Day, the annual lighting ceremony of the National Hanukkah Menorah will get underway, arguably the most prominent public Hanukkah event in the world. The celebration draws thousands of attendees each year. It's a tradition that dates back to 1979 under President Jimmy Carter. My next guest is getting ready for the celebrations himself on the National Mall there, uh, Rabbi Levi Shemtov. Joining me right now, he is the executive vice president of American Friends of Lubavitch Chabad. He is the founder of the Capital Jewish Forum, also the rabbi for Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. Rabbi Shemtov, uh, good to see you. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah to you. We're just a couple of hours away from uh, what's probably the premier celebration of Hanukkah in the world. And uh, thanks for having me with you. Absolutely. So tell me how meaningful it is uh, to happen. You've got sunny skies there, which means you're going to have a wonderful turnout this evening with uh, clear skies uh, tonight. Tell me what this event symbolizes for you. Well, we've been doing this event for uh, 40 years, Federica. And uh, this, this started in 1979 when uh, then President Carter walked out of the White House and joined the lighting. And ever since then, we've had uh, dignitaries, the vice president, members of the cabinet. This year, we're going to have the interior secretary, uh, David Bernhardt, who's going to be joining us together with the president's own United States Marine Band. Thousands of people are turning out. We put months uh, of preparation uh, into this. And then, uh, I guess, God decides what kind of weather to bless us with and to make sure that we are um, able to welcome everyone. Now, we had a surge of registration over the last few days. We're now expecting some four or 5,000 people. But, of course, tens of millions are going to see this via the media mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the newscasts. So, and this is um, a, this essentially, is a... what this is is two... Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, essentially this is two things. I mean, uh, it's an ancient tradition going back about 2,000 years where the sages uh, declared that in this period, every year, we should remember the miracle and proclaim it in the most public way possible. So although there are many Jewish rituals and traditions, this is the one that must be public in order for us to fulfill our obligation. Mm -hmm. So we take the menorah and we put it at a window or doorway, someplace where people will see it. And um, in the past 40 years, it's become uh, customary, or 45 years actually, uh, it's become customary to place these in public places like Independence Mall and now at the Ellipse before it was in Lafayette uh, Square. It's been in places like uh, uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, Trafalgar Square in, in, in London, uh, Central Park in, in, in New York, uh, Moscow's Red Square, Rem mm -hmm. imagine that. Uh, mm -hmm. Places all over the world, the Sydney Opera House, everywhere you can imagine. Mm -hmm. We have some 15,000 celebrations mm -hmm. like this going on this year, which are going to draw millions of people. But this is the one that has spawned uh, mm -hmm. this great network of similar uh, celebrations around the world in many countries that didn't even have thriving yeah. Jewish communities for many, many years. Yes. And especially in recent times, given what, with what's happened here in the United States, both in terms of uh, the Jewish community um, yeah. and, and generally, I believe that in the darkness that has started to lurk in the forms of, you know, senseless hatred and acts of violence mm -hmm. and things of that nature, one of the most effective well, let, responses let we can ever that. have mm -hmm. is light. Yes. So, so this is an, an evening of celebration and inclusion, but, you know, uh, you talk about, you know, moments of darkness and, and, and how the nation is grappling with so much, particularly 25 Jewish Democratic members of Congress are actually calling now for the removal of a senior White House advisor, Steve and Miller, and they're citing, you know, his uh, promotion of stories from white nationalists as their reasoning and, and looking at emails uh, in which were conveyed. Congressman uh, James Clyburn is someone I spoke with yesterday, and he weighed in on um, this letter uh, and, and this plea from 25 lawmakers in this manner. I'm so glad. The many of my uh, people from the Jewish community are now speaking up about uh, Stephen Miller. This guy is, is really a cancer uh, on this country, not just this presidency. Coming back. So where are you on this? Well, here's the story. I'm decidedly and devotedly nonpartisan or bipartisan. I happen to know Stephen Miller. I also know Jim Clyburn. He was an honoree of ours years ago. I know many of the 25 Jewish members who signed that letter, and I'm going to respectfully decline 
um, to comment on the letter or that particular issue. But also but as the rabbi of this, Ivanka I Trump will, and Jared Kushner, um, surely they counsel with you and vice versa from time to time. And this is an area um, that I would believe would bring some consternation uh, from anyone in public service in the White House when you're talking about criticism about an advisor to the president whom they interact with on a regular basis. Yes, but as you can imagine, I'm going to keep any conversations I have with people who come to our synagogue private. It's just a basic core of my professional responsibility and clerical responsibility as a rabbi. So it's not about but the having said that, what would you I advise? Believe, uh, what, what do you believe should happen? Well, I, I believe that we all have to take a look at the big structure behind me uh, called the menorah, and we have to look at how it's uh, how it's created and what it looks like. The temple had a very similar um, model, and if you notice, there's a base from which branches come out to both sides and then the branches go up straight. Unlike in the temple, these candles also all point straight. But in the temple, the wicks would point towards the center. And then there would be one wick in the middle that pointed straight up. We are told that that wick represented divinity and the branches on both sides had the wicks pointing back towards the center because no matter how we are formed, whether we go right or left in our ideas, in our persuasion, in our background, we have to be willing to have our wick, our illumination, point towards something more central. So let's just say that I would appeal to people on the left or on the right to please have their wick point towards the center. In that way, we're going to become a country that's much better off because people will not only focus on where they come from or what they believe, but open their ears and their hearts to people who may be diametrically opposed to their opinion. In that way, what we can do is we can cause a lot more light than heat. I think everyone in the city here is looking for that. Well, everyone in our nation is looking for that. Are those 25 lawmakers in your Everybody view pointing to the center? Is that what they are asking? They're asking for company in pointing to the center that you're talking about, aren't they? Well, if I, if I were able to have the year of all 25, I'd say, why don't they all get together and try and figure out if there's a common purpose? We have 350 million Americans who are watching a lot of the dispute and a lot of the discord here in our capital. And what they want is people to just lower the tone a little bit about what they think and listen to what the others think, because I can promise you one thing. Only good can come to our nation from the sides coming together and speaking to each other and trying to aim toward that middle divine flame. I think that's what our nation needs now, this Hanukkah. And I think it's not just the Jewish community, but it's the entire community. And I, I, I think that with all the controversies that swirl and all of the uh, high emotions, I think if people could somehow focus on a more common purpose going forward, we're all going to be better for it. And I think that that would be what I would tell everybody, whether they're on the left or on the right, let's focus the wick, the flame, the illumination, the warmth towards the center. Let's right. try and get something everyone can live with so that our whole nation can move forward and bring some light into what's darkness for a lot of people. All right, Rabbi Alevi Shemtov, thank you so much. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, and I really wish everybody finds more brightness, more happiness, greatness in their life and whatever it is that they need. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much.